It's third week in April. We're at mile 16 on North Shore Road in Lake Mead. That is Lake Mead National Recreation Area. And you shouldn't be here at this time of year. I would normally be here in the winter. It's going to be up to 95 degrees today. We're going to do some testing here. We're going to go to the Bowl of Fire take a few photographs of the cool rock formations there, and also just test what it's like to operate in this kind of temperature. And I'll report on my findings. Um, I, I definitely wouldn't go above 104 degrees because I understand 104 degrees is, is the cutoff point where the body stops to function correctly and where you can end up in serious condition. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna give you bowl of fire directions here um, along the way. And we just came down this little hill that was shortly after that parking area on mile 16. And there are split off roads to the left you just want to stay right. And the roads to the left are gonna lead more toward Anniversary Narrows, which is an awesome place to visit. But to the right is what we want for the Bowl of Fire. And I'll show you as soon as we see the Bowl of Fire. It's only, uh, it's less than two miles till we reach the turnoff on this road that'll be a left turn to the Bowl of Fire. Okay, here's another split, and this is actually the, the main split. It lets you know you're entering the Muddy Mountains Wilderness, and um, this is road number 94. And if you took a left here, you'd be on Anniversary Mine Road. heading toward Anniversary Narrows, which is an awesome experience. Check that out on Las Vegas area trails and many amazing photography spots on Anniv Anniversary Narrows. It's a slot canyon. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to continue to head up Road 94. So it's basically straight. You do not take the left turn here. And let's continue. Okay, this road is actually very well graded. And you could take a two wheel drive on this road. I could even take the beast on this road, but I don't like to take the beast off of asphalt because you never know what's ahead. Anyway, um, as far as water, I have about five liters. So that's important if you are 
going to be wandering around in this desert wilderness area. Carry lots of water. It'll be heavy at first, but it'll get light pretty fast. Now, another thing that I want to point out is that um, I believe this ahead is Anniversary Ridge. And when you're on Anniversary Ridge, you're looking right down into the bowl of fire. So we'll know for sure it could Anniversary Ridge could actually be the ridge in the background there. Yeah, that could be Anniversary Ridge. And that's how close the bowl of fire is to where we are. Okay, since the weather has heated up, let's talk rattlesnakes for a moment. I've been in the Las Vegas area and within 150 miles um, taking adventures about once a week for that entire time. And the reason I'm pointing that out is that I have not seen one rattlesnake. But what I've tried to do is stay at a temperature of about 70 degrees. And you can do that um, in the Las Vegas area. Uh, the wilderness areas around Las Vegas have enough of an elevation change that um, you can be in 70 degrees all year round, whether it's 120 degrees in Las Vegas or um, whether it's 40 degrees in Las Vegas. You just go low or you go high and you stay basically at an even temperature. So I have made a practice of staying within about uh, 65 to 80 degrees and this is the first this will be my first 95 degree adventure so as i mentioned rattlesnakes could be a consideration definitely if you're hiking through wilderness like this at night wow um, you really have to be careful because that's when they're out hunting but as I mentioned, one of the reasons I have not yet seen a rattlesnake since 2016 in this area is that I keep my, the temperature, I stay where the temperature is around 70 degrees. Another reason is my trekking poles. There, they are. And these poles are yucca stalks. And I show how to wind the handles with twine. I show that on lasvegasareatrails.com in the gear section. Um, and as I go, I'm using those trekking poles. They're hitting the ground and um, I think that scares off just about everything in the area if you're looking for great shots of animals um, do not use the trekking poles but um, they do help harness my upper body strength and it seems to clear the path of all critters so anyway yeah continuing up this fine road and we'll be at the bowl of fire soon Okay, I have not actually entered the bull fire from this direction, um, but it's it's looking like yes, you pass this formation, and then shortly thereafter you're going to take a left, and you'll see the road branches off at that point. And bull of fire, you see some of the red rock, just the tip of some of the red rock up ahead, and in the background that's Anniversary Ridge. So, um, bull of fire is at the base of Anniversary Ridge. So let's continue on up. I'll show you where the 
split off point is where you want to be taking a left off of this road heading to the bowl of fire um, the reason this road is important is yeah you could drive this road and save a mile or two in each direction um, however if you don't mind trekking through desert like this and finding pathways um, you could park on a North Shore Road. I think it's um, mile marker number 17 and then just head straight over to the Bowl of Fire. A little more walking, but less overall distance. Okay, time to check in as to where we are. This is continuing up the road. But I have a feeling that the Bull of Fire entrance is going to be right in this area where you see a couple split off lanes and then here's a parking area. And we are, we have just passed that high point we were looking at a moment ago. Here's the road heading down where we came from. And by the way, it's only been about I'd say a little over 30 minutes, between 30 and 40 minutes walking. So not bad at all. And then just to complete the picture here, this um, ridge on your right when you're on this road is another indicator of where you are because um, if you're coming from North Shore, North Shore Road, you're going to look at this ridge and you're going to skirt the upper end of the ridge, the base of the ridge, and then head into this area for the bowl of fire. So that gives you an idea where we are. So let's go ahead and, and explore that entrance to the bowl of fire a little further. I just want to give you the best turn off here and I believe it's right up in this direction now it may be the ridge that you see in the background or it could be just heading right in this direction but the bull of fire is right in this area. So let's see if we can find a pathway. Yeah, let's just keep going in this direction. See the little wilderness sign here. There's a vehicle barrier, a couple boulders, and you find yourself on what we hope will be a trail. Let's just see. Okay, here's a little trail heading in this direction and another one heading in this direction. I believe that what I call the Southern Bowl, there's a Southern and Northern Bowl of Fire, or some refer to these as the Southern is the lower Bowl of Fire, the Northern is the upper Bowl of Fire. I think this is the Southern lower Bowl of Fire, and you see Anniversary Ridge. The beautiful Anniversary Narrows Slot Canyon is on the other side of this ridge and it's in the, um, the ridge that's on the horizon here. So let's go ahead and let's just head in this direction here and see if that does indeed lead us to the lower or southern bull of fire. And so far so good. Nice little trail that split off from that road we were on, road 94 I think it was, and here we are skirting 
the edge of this ridge here. Notice the green rock, it's either um, has copper in it, turns it green, or chlorite. So, yeah, not being a geologist, I can't tell you which, but there you have it. Let's continue on this nice little trail. Wow, look at this. Desert holds a lot of surprises that come upon you unexpected. I'm not sure the name of this beautiful blooming shrub. I'll see if I can put it on the video. I'll try to track it down. Okay, let's continue along this little channel. And by the way, if you're ever in an area like this during July, where there are some likely thunderstorms, uh, you definitely want to always have an escape plan because water can, you know, a thunderstorm can be up in the mountains above and the sky could be blue where you are. All of a sudden, you're faced with a wall of water flash flood. So just to be aware. Looking down the trail. And looking up the trail and yeah, we'll be passing, we'll be circling around this ridge on our left soon. Another one of those brilliant blue shrubs. And here above it, I believe this is creosote. Not absolutely sure. I will identify that also later. Put the name of this on the video. Another thing I wanted to point out is, yeah, I mentioned that we want to get over this ridge. And look, here is a little split off trail. Gets us up above the ridge. And I believe on the other side of the ridge, we're going to start seeing the southern bull of fire. Okay, now on top of the ridge. And... I believe we're heading directly for the southern or the lower bowl of fire and you can see the red rock ahead. So if that all bears out, then taking that little trail up to the top of that ridge that was on our left was a good choice. And of course, if you'd stayed in the wash below and to our right, um, looks like that would have continued also. So, and in fact, yeah, okay. I was going to say, in fact, this trail leads us back down there, but nope. Still winding around higher, and I always choose the higher ridges over the washes, because when you're in the wash, you can't see around, but you have much better view above on the ridges. And you can see there's the wash, and you can see a ridge on either side of the wash. And we're closing in on those red rocks that are a sign that we're at, in the bowl of fire. Okay, this little trail does involve a little more climbing uphill than the wash below. The wash below may have been more direct, but I'm going to guess that this little trail is going to lead us to a cool overlook of the southern or lower bowl of fire and possibly 
see the northern or upper bowl in addition. And then if it leads us down into the bowl, then it's a double advantage. Otherwise, we may find ourselves having to backtrack, get back into the wash and get to the bowl. But look at this. We'll be seeing, yeah, there's the wash ahead and below. And soon we'll be getting our first look. In fact, here it is, our first look at the southern or lower bowl of fire. Yeah, I like this little trail. And by the way, as I mentioned, um, be able to see both the lower southern and upper northern bowl from this perspective. Here's the lower southern bowl. And then you see that ridge up in this direction. That red rock ridge, that is the upper or what I call the northern bowl of fire. The wash we were in is below and I think it actually hits um, between both. It arrives between the lower and upper bowl of fire. So give you an idea of where we are. So let's see if we can now descend into this bowl and um, and just look around. What I want to show you is some of the amazing rock formations here. And here's one right ahead. Rock formation. A lot of little arches. Let's get up here, get a better look. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful. And we'll look at it from both sides. But you see how it makes a little arch here. So let's go around and look at the other side. Yeah, take a look at this. We're approaching that same formation from the other side. Ah, let's get up here without slipping. And yeah, look at this. Wow. Yeah, this is just way too cool. I'm inside this formation now. Maybe you can hear a slight echo. Now, it's a true wonder how these are formed. Sandstone from the Jurassic era. Molded by the wind and the water. Till you get these incredible formations. And then here you see, oh, look at this. This looks like a little animal has inhabited this area. A little cove. And then just walking around up in this area among the formations. Wow. Totally amazing. Okay, here's a little unexpected occurrence. My camera shut down because it's too hot 
for the camera. <laughs> that, that should be a not too good sign, but hey, look at this. While we can catch it, there's another formation right there. So all around us, we're in the southern or lower bowl of fire. And that little trail that I meant that, that we were on a, a moment ago, um, that descends into the bowl. So, so yeah, some beautiful little formations up in this area. And then we're going to descend into the uh, lower bowl and see a few more formations. Here we go.
here's something unexpected a beehive in the rock Fortunately, no one set off an alarm yet. Everybody's happy. 